Now then, this uh, comes from Morgan in Taunton, age nine. Uh, do you think there is life out there like aliens? <laughs> it's a good question. It's always the children have the best questions. And the they? hardest to yeah. answer. Um, I think so. And I think that alien life or extraterrestrial life um, is, is a likelihood. It, it's, it's probable enough, it's likely enough that it's worthwhile to, to go out and look for it. But I think there's a distinction between um, primitive life, bacterial life, that could survive on places like the frozen desert of Mars, and then intelligent life that would have to be complex and big and quite fragile, like, like a human being. To have intelligent life, the life that might be able to have a conversation with us over radio, it would have to have a planet. Its home would have to be a planet probably a lot more like the Earth. It's interesting to look at the shift in this, I think, over the time of Sky at Night, because this used to be the astronomer's problem. Now it's a biologist's problem. Right. What conditions do you need for life? If you have those conditions, if you have water, liquid water, if you're in the Goldilocks zone, what else do you need? How likely is it that life will begin? Yeah. And then maybe it will become a sociologist's problem. I think myself, yeah. the key may be Mars. If we find any trace of life on Mars, and can prove it's not Earth contamination. That will show that life has appeared in our own solar system on two planets. Just two neighbouring And that will be yeah. a pointer to the fact that life is gone. Absolutely. What I think is very interesting is that we do see complex carbon chemistry, don't we, out there in, in space? I mean, amino acids certainly in do. the meteorites, the building blocks of life. So it Absolutely, seems that yeah. the building blocks are common throughout the solar system, at least, doesn't it? If there's life, it will appear. Will intelligence appear? Well, this, this again it's is. Probably, is a, I mean, uh, it, uh, it hasn't on the earth. <laughs> <laughs> not, yet. not yet. It's not but intelligence it's, you care about. It's technology. Yes. Well, the technology that would allow us yeah. to communicate. Yeah, life, life that would make itself conspicuous in the galaxy. That would have industry or be beaming signals towards us. Right. And by your own definition, we weren't intelligent until about 50, 60 years ago when we started beaming radio waves and radar and television. Thought, thought you were going to say when the sky at night started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does life have to be? carbon based and does it necessarily always need liquid water mm. or is that just because what we're perhaps most familiar not, perhaps with it's being a bit blinkered and kind of egocentric we're water based and carbon based so the first good point i think is that well we know that works we're a good example of it so maybe it makes most sense to go for stuff that a we know works and b would be able to recognize um, if we went to Mars or Europa. Carbon has a lot of advantages. Yeah. It makes more bonds and more different types of bonds than anything else. Um, it, it's stable, so, so the, there are good reasons to think that Advanced we, we chose well. It needn't look like us. I mean, there's not much upwards resemblance between a, a jellyfish and a man. They're well, both carbon-based.